have to do. So I'm actually just going to troll through the readme. Right? This is what is going on. Boop, boop, boop. So today you're going to make a simple to-do list. Powerful. Um, I actually know what this is supposed to look like, so I don't have to see this. But we can always take a look at the working demo by clicking on it. Boop. Great. Instructions. Cool. I've got it here. How to structure your code. So you have this source index.js file. Good deal. And it's not just the JS that's on the root. So it's inside a folder called source. That's all. Here's the deliverable. So the idea is I need to be able to type a task into the input field. Okay. So let me see if that's there. Oh wow, there's a task in the input field. Cool. Wait, can I ask one question actually? That's not really a deliverable. It's already there. Yeah. Um, so HTML collections, they can be iterated through with like for in loops, but not for each. Yes. So the for in loop and the for loop in general is just I'm going to go through something based on certain conditions, right? So like if I were to do let me just do, let me go into a JS file so it helps me because I'm a, a dirtbag. If I do four, I can feed it the array that I'm going to go through. So this right here is just regular vanilla JavaScript that lets me go through any array or any array-like object. If I had a regular array dot for each, notice how this dot is being called on the actual array itself. So this is an array method. And so that's why. Yeah, good question. Wow, that's very powerful. All right, cool. So let's go back to the deliverables, right? As a user, I should be able to click some form of submit button. Okay. Wow. Wow. This thing's basically done for you. Oh, my God. As a user, the task string that I provide should appear on the DOM after the submit button has been activated. Okay, so this is like the first real thing you have to do. Of the three deliverables, two of them are already there. Magic. It's like super easy. All right, cool, so let's take it out. So what's the first thing I really need, right? The idea is that there's this task string that's inside an input and that it needs to appear on the DOM after I've clicked the submit button. So before I kind of dive into this deliverable, there's a few things that I've promised you that I'd kind of go over and I want to talk about um, before we kind of get started on the features. The first thing is like this DOM content loaded. Who here is like familiar or understands this DOM content loaded? Cool. What what is DOM content loaded? Why would this be important? Exactly. If you have the script thing on the top, right, it doesn't really load. So let's actually take a look. Did I collapse this? Okay. So if you do this, right, like this little action right here where you kind of like hold, like if I have a bunch of code, blah, 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 and then I did this. This is called code folding, where I'm like folding all of it, I'm collapsing it into like one liner. It's just called code folding. So. You may or may not see it. it. It can help you when you have like larger functions and you want to collapse them to make your code more readable. It's no big deal. All right. So let's take a look at this index.html, right? Notice how I have my script tag at the bottom over here. If I were to put the script tag here and I did not have this, boop, it's gone. Boop, boop. Let's do this. So my script tag's right here, right, inside the head. The way your HTML runs is it will read and parse through and execute line for line. So it'll read this head tag, I'm like, cool, good to go. It'll see this link tag. It'll be like, okay, this is a local style.css file. So I'm gonna pull that style.css into my HTML. Then it's gonna see this script tag and it's gonna pull this local file into my HTML. It has to go get the file then read and execute it, and then it's going to load the rest of my body. So what does that mean for you? It means that if I have a div with the ID of main content, let's take a look. I can simply do document.querySelector, and I can pass in the ID of main content, and then I'm just going to make this uh, main. 
So if I console log main, what should be there? I get null. Why would I get null? I can, but why would I get null? Main content doesn't exist yet. That's exactly correct. Main content doesn't exist yet, right? I'm on line seven. This is when the script gets fetched, parsed, and executed right here on line seven. So does this div even exist yet when I'm here? So there's several things that I can do, and I'm gonna go in depth as to which one is sort of like makes the most sense to do. The idea is I can keep it in the head, which is what we traditionally used to do back in the day. Or I can grab and I can move it to the bottom right before the body ends. If I do that, when the script loads on line 27, does this main div content exist? So if I refresh, it should be there. And so where you write your code and when it runs is very important. It has to be within the body. It, it can be outside of it. It can, but typically they just put it at the end of the body. Convention. Yeah. So there's a couple things that we could do, right? So Oscar had mentioned that there's a tag that we can add in here, right? And that is an attribute of the script tag called defer. So what defer will do is literally wait until the rest of the HTML loads before this script tag will execute. There's also another one, and it's called async. So I can put in this async. That means that it will asynchronously get this and then fetch and then parse it. Does anyone know what async means so far? What, what is async? Uh, it means that it gets Yeah. So async just means that something is happening at the same time as something else. Right? So if something is being done synchronously, it has to be one, then two, then three, then four. But just so I make sure I understand it. So you're saying that when you add that async to the end of the script tag, mm -hmm. that's running while the HTML is running as like simultaneously? Yeah. So let's actually take a look at this like baller article that I've pulled up for you. Ready? So the position matters, right? We kind of went through this. Like where that script tag goes is pretty important to what's going on. So there's a couple things you can do. You can use either async or defer. And so here's what happens when you load just the HTML, the script, in the head tag without either async or defer, right? The first thing is it starts the parsing of the HTML, right? You're in the head tag, then you have that link tag that we saw, then you saw the meta tag. So you saw this, you saw this, you saw this. It starts to parse that HTML. Then when it gets to your script tag, your HTML cannot load until it gets the JavaScript file, it downloads it, and then it executes the script. And then the rest of the HTML will load, which makes sense because that's why when it was here, this main content didn't exist yet. So far, so good. Now, if you put it at the end of the body, all of your HTML will run, and then right at the end of the body, it will fetch and execute the script, which is why that main div existed at this point when I moved the script tag to the end of the body in the HTML. So far, so good. If I put async, it's going to start parsing. It's going to fetch the script asynchronously. So if my JavaScript file is 900 lines long, it's going to get it, and then it's going to download while still loading. But once it finishes downloading, it has to run all 900 lines, and that's going to pause the reading of your HTML. And so that's what async does. It just simply means that the fetching, the getting, and the downloading of your JavaScript file happens at the same time. It doesn't mean the running of your JavaScript file happens differently. Uh, so like, how would you, like, would it still know in this specific scenario? Like, how far it's, you get? That's the problem. It becomes very indeterminate. You can't tell because it's going to go get it, and then the HTML is going to continue running, 
And then once it starts running, it could be anywhere in your HTML. Now with the defer, it's going to run through, it's going to get and download, and then at the end of the HTML, it's going to run. So in terms of speed, defer is probably your best option if you put the HTML in the head tag. Cool? Any questions on like async, defer, where you put the script tag, and kind of like what folks do now is like best practice. So is defer pretty identical to the no, DOM content loaded is going to be the same as putting the script at the end of the body. Okay. Yeah. Because with defer, you actually fetch the script at some point, but with putting it at the end of the body, with defer, it had already downloaded it while it was reading the HTML. So you, you're saving a little bit there. Okay. Versus DOM content loaded, which would be kind of like here. A fuzzy end okay. I don't want to take up like a ton of time, but the bottom line is, take a look at this. What's going to happen is, it's going to read through my HTML. It's going to see the script tag, go and download it, but not run any of the JavaScript. Because remember, hopefully this like helps you out a little bit. We talked about this network tab, and when I hit refresh, you could see all the files that get downloaded, Ugh. you see all the files that get downloaded here. So it took 43 milliseconds to download my, I don't know, two lines of JavaScript. But if you had a ton of JavaScript in this file, it might take a little bit longer. So the idea is that I'm just going to download it, wait until the end, after the HTML is done, then execute the JavaScript. So it's step, you only use the async and defer when you move the script tag. If, if you're trying to adjust where the script tag goes, yeah. Cool? Yeah. So. Uh, I just wrote a question. Do you get any type of visual uh, stutter or change because it loads the data first and then takes in the scripts? As far as HTML, the JavaScript that I've seen sometimes when things load. It will affect behavior, right? So, I mean, this is actually a good dive into something like else that's actually kind of important. But the idea here is that, you ever been to a website where like the page loads but you can't click anything or you can't scroll yet? And it's kind of like, oh, what's going on? Why is this so slow? Even though you see everything on the page. That is how that particular developer attempted to either async, defer, or where they're running the script tag. So if there's no functionality to your website yet, if I'm clicking things, even though the page is loaded, that means that my JavaScript hasn't executed. Those buttons have no event listener on them, even though the HTML is there. And so this talks about performance. Is there a best practice for all of this, or does I would just, I would say, generally speaking, put it in the head and defer it. That's kind of like my, my general rule of thumb. I think that's how Twitter does it, and they're 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 pretty good. So. Cool, any questions on this? How are you guys feeling about this now? A little bit better? All right, so if I were to not put async or defer here at all, remember that this script tag loads immediately. And so what I can do is add an event listener of DOM content loaded to make sure that the rest of the HTML loads so I have access to it. So I'm not getting that weird null whenever I do a query selector. Cool? So instead of DOM content loaded, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put defer. All right. Sweet. Good deal. So we should still see main here, and it's still there. All right. So now back to this feature, right? Actually, there's a, there's a lot of questions that I got yesterday, so I'm going to talk through a lot of these, right? So DOM content loaded defer. We good on this? Yeah. Go on. The next thing is this arrow function syntax, right? We have function keyword, right? And we can put um, Charlie Brown. Boop, boop. And then we have the arrow syntax. So I can do const, all right, Charlie Gray. I don't know why you want to do that. And then I could just do this right here, like the parentheses, and then use this rocket syntax to make it. So the only difference is instead of the keyword function, 
I have this little hash rocket after the parentheses. That's really the main difference. For what you need to know right now, there's literally no difference for what you need to know right now between those two. So I can take Charlie Gray and I can invoke it because remember this is just a variable that holds a function or I can just invoke Charlie Brown as a function. You guys feel like okay about this arrow syntax? I would say for right now until we get to the arrow syntax you should just get practice just writing this. Just, just do functions everywhere. All right. Unless you feel really comfortable with the arrow, just function everything. Cool. Yeah. All right. Is it is it the is it like the fact that it's like pitch black in here and kind of like you guys feel like you're watching a movie? This is so weird. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So the next thing I want to talk about is this like the fact that um, unfortunately I didn't have the chance to talk to you about um, what to expect when you're expecting mod three. The last bit of it is JavaScript's the Wild West, right? In Ruby, there's a way to write Ruby. Rails is very opinionated. If you don't write get to slash exactly the way it wants it, it will punish you and then tell you the exact syntax it wants. JavaScript, as all of you have now learned in all the labs, and you've probably talking to your, your friends and your battle buddies, like, hey, how did you do that? Oh my god, that's weird. Does it work? Cool. You can do the for in, you can do the for of, you can do a for each. All right, you can append child, and then there's something I'm going to show you today, and you can start messing directly to the inner HTML. And so there's so many different ways. No way is necessarily, generally speaking, better than the other. So it can be very confusing because there's so many different ways to do it. That's why the only thing I want you to take away from mod three is the understanding of the language and the process. Like, what information do I need? What am I trying to do? And then how do I want to approach writing it? If you can know, if you could figure that out, however you want to do it, we'll be okay. All right, cool. And then we're actually going to get to like this data set attribute. So again, the deliverable, right? Like I said, I'm going to lose myself, my train of thought. But as a user, right, somebody puts in a task string, and then now I want to be able to slap it on the DOM. So someone want to help me out here? What what information do we need, and what are we trying to do? Okay, so do we have a submit button here? Yes. And do we want to listen to the submit button? No. The idea is that we want to make sure that once the user submits this form, then I want something to happen, right? So this right here, even if you look at the HTML, this is actually an input. The type is submit, but it's a part of this form. Right, so I want to wait until the user submits this form before I do anything. Knowing that, I want to wait until the user submits the form. What do I need? I need the form. I need the form. It, the form itself, right? Because I can't really do anything without the form. So how would I grab the form? All right. So cons, right? Like task form is equal to what? All right, I can select it based on its ID, which is? All right, so far so good? Cool. So what do I want to do with this task form? All right, I probably want to now listen to see when that form is actually submitted. The idea is that you should be console logging all of these things every step of the way, so you make sure it's there. So on the task form, I want to listen for that submit event. So I can add an event. Huh, why is that not finishing for me? Bizarre. Okay, and what event do we want? Have you taken a look at all the events yet? Have you guys seen the events? Yeah. Okay. And what event do we want? Submit. Submit. Smart. And then once it submits, we have to tell it what to do. All right? So it needs a callback function that I'm going to write in line right here. And this callback should know about the event that's actually happening. So I'm going to pass an E. And let's just try to console log 
e.target. Like what is it that I clicked? I want to make sure that everything is like running smoothly as expected. Go to flop. And I hit this. And it seems to do that weird sort of refresh, right? Does anyone want to explain what's happening here? What were you going to say? Right, yeah, so it's reloading the page sort of, and it's doing this like post action because forms by default will attempt to send a post. But where is it post? Right now it's going nowhere. So it looks like it's just refreshing. So we want to prevent that sort of regular behavior, that default behavior. So I'm going to take the event, right, which is the submit of the form, and I want to prevent the default of that form submission so that now I can handle it with JavaScript and not with HTML's defaulting actions. Okay? Go, go, go. So now I'm actually getting the form every single time. All right? And I'm pausing that sort of prevent default. Cool? All right, so now what's next? Right. So the idea here is that like I'm on the form, I'm listening for it, I've stopped its regular execution. And the idea is that I want to be able to add whatever the user typed in here onto the page. So I naturally would then need whatever the user typed in, which makes total sense. So how would I be able to grab what the user typed in? Where is the user typing this in? Right, inside this input field, right? So do I have access to this input field right now? Not yet, but I can. So how can I grab it? Constant. Constant what? Like new new task, right? Something like that. If you make it too generic, it becomes difficult to read. But naming conventions become important, right? So this new task, and how would I grab it? All right, and I'm just going to grab the ID of new task description. So for me, I'm not entirely sure that that's correct. So I'm just going to console log. So should I see anything right now? When should I see it? After the user submits, right? Which makes so much sense because this whole thing fires after I submit the form. So now that I have the new task, what do I really need? I want the value, so I can just tack on value here. Or I can do new task.value whatever you prefer, right? For me, I'm just going to put value here because I'm assuming the new task is not an input, but the actual like task itself, right? That's just the way it reads. So, great, I have the task, right? And I'm listening for when the form submits. What do I need to do now? So, I have the user input. And now what do I need to do? I'm going to slap it on the DOM. Oh, whatever. Do slap it on the document. That's not as fun. So I want to slap it on the DOM, right? And how do I do that? Well, the first thing is where? Where do I want to put this? All right? Where would I like to put this? Should I put it on list? Why tasks? Right. This just makes more sense to me, right? So great. So how do I grab that? Document, right? We can query selector. The ID of tasks. So before we get any further, right, let's stop and think for a moment. Do I need to wait until the submit happens to grab the tasks? Or does the task already exist on the page? It already exists on the page. So should I have to grab it every time I hit submit? No. So let's let's grab it outside. So I can do const right tasks task list is equal to this. So now I have this task list. Do I have access to the task list on line 16? Yes. Why? Because it reaches out, right? The way JavaScript scoping works, I'm inside of this function. I should have access to this thing on the global. So on the task list, what do I want to do? Yeah. 
it will, no, it only goes outwards. It won't like jump into something else. Yeah, it's weird like that. You know, it's not, it doesn't have like frogger like powers. It's terrible. All right, cool. So, I'm stupid. Um, great. So the idea here is that, like I have this task, right? I have the form submitting. What next? Hmm? Why would I want to make an li and not like a p tag for this? Right, just always being aware of like what you're adding to. This is an unordered list, so it makes sense that I need to make an li. So how do I do that? Right, I can simply make the element, and what do I want to make? An li. So I can put, right, uh, task item. So what do I need to do with this task item? What is the task item right now? What does it look like if I console logged it? Just like a li tag itself, right? No attributes, no text. Nathan, hot dogs, bagels. I'm hungry. So yeah, what do I need to do? What what should I be changing about this li? Is it the inner HTML? So let's talk about the inner HTML for a second, right? So. One thing I want to introduce to you now is who liked binding pry or like the buy bug in like Rails, right? That was super money. So what you can do is you can do this right here. Just drop a freaking debugger. That's just the word, just debugger. So in theory, the idea here is that once I'm hitting this line in execution, it should pause. So if I were to put in blah, 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 and I hit create task, it'll pause my code right there. This only works if the dev tools are open. If I don't have the dev tools open, the debugger will never hit, even if I add the debugger in there. Cool? So, what do I want to look at? What is task item? It's just a regular li, right? Remember, this is what it looks like. So this right here, right, is the HTML. Between the brackets of li, This right here, this is the inner text. That make sense? The, what the text is between the brackets is the inner text. So what would be the inner HTML? Well, if I had it like this, right, and I had some text here, what if I had a P tag inside? And then I also had, for whatever reason, an h2 tag. Oops. These two, can you read this in the back? Actually, I realized how small that is. You can read it? These two, right, this p tag and this h2, this HTML is inside the li. So this right here would be considered the inner HTML. And this right here would be considered the inner text. So you feel like a little bit more comfortable with the difference between the two? Let's let's do that right now. You got a question? Yeah, this kind of gesture actually. So if we did inner text on the ally and we had the P tags and H2 tags, would that affect affect the text inside those tags as well? No, it should affect only the inner text for the ally. Okay. All right, so let's actually take a look at what's going on. So the idea here is what I want to do is I want actually really want to mess with the inner text of the li. All right, so if I take the task item and I do inner text, and I want to set that to what? So a good, a good debugging tool is you hard code everything, and then you test it, and then you interpolate your variables just to see if it works. So if I hard coded, all right, for show, the idea here is that if I put in whatever I wanted, it shouldn't append yet, but for show should be the inner text of the li. So if I put a debugger, and I put in just some gibberish, I'm in the debugger. So this like will evaluate a lot of things for you, which is kind of cool. So if I take a look at the, Huh, that was bizarre. 
That's literally never happened before. Hmm. Hmm. Anyways, task. Wow. Okay. Cool. Oh, wow. It doesn't want to evaluate for me. All right. We'll have to go old school. Let's console log it. Okay. Adapt and overcome. So if I boop, 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 boop. Huh? All right, cool. Uh, anyways, you see here that for show is actually just like the inner text of LI. And now we need to slap this thing on the DOM, right? So where do we want to put it? Right. Right, we want to put it on this task list, right? Right here is where I want all the LIs to go. So I can simply take the task list. Whoa, okay. Wow, embarrassing. Nobody corrected me? It's embarrassing. Is that why it didn't work? No, the dev tools should, shouldn't break on a, like a capitalization. But you never know. I'm assuming not, but who knows? All right. And so how do I slap this on the DOM? What do I need to do? Great. So I'm going to just drop this right on the DOM. So if I were to do now new task and I hit create task, it's always going to be for show, no matter what I do. Boop, 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 boop. Because I hard coded it, which made sense. But what really do we want in here instead of like a hard coded string? All right, the new task. So I can put this is new. Boop. Right? And so look at this user experience, right? Do I want this form to still have everything in there? What can I do? What am I trying to do? I'm trying to like clear the form, right, when I'm done. So if you like straight up Google like, hey, like clear form JavaScript, the first thing you'll see is you can grab the form itself. So task form, and you can run a reset on it. Boop, boop. And that will that'll do it. So That'll do. And now the description. Now the form's been reset. So if you have a lot of inputs, this will clear it out. Yeah? You don't think that inner, inner text? Yeah. You, you can't do dot value. Or, or my question is, what is dot value? Value is an attribute of some HTML tags, specifically like input. Input will be whatever was, the value is whatever was typed inside this input. That's not the same as inner text. If I were to look at, so right now in this h1, what is the value of this h1 tag? It's kind of nothing, right? There's no value attribute. I don't have anything here that says value equals, right? So there's no real value to this h1, but the inner text of this h1 is task list or light tm. Console dir, console dir. Yeah. All right. So let's talk a little bit about this, like inner HTML and how that might be useful to us. All right. So if I were to go to this div and this, let's take a look at this div right here with the list. All right. If I were to grab it, how would I grab it? All right. Hashtag list. Lost. Boop, boop. Actually, I don't have a reference to it. So const, right, um, the list, the lost. So if I were to do the list and check its inner HTML, what should I get? Just looking at this here. This is what it looks like. The inner HTML comes back as a string, right? And it matches directly, one for one, this right here. Question? All right. So what happens if I add OK 
plus, no, what would happen? Okay, no. So if I were to take something like okay, and I were to add like a p tag that said no, what would I see? What if instead this was also a p tag? What would I get? I would get an opening and closing p tag and another opening and closing p tag just as a string. If I know that I can do that and I see that this right here is just a string and I know how to add strings, if I were to take the inner HTML and I wanted to add to it, and I wanted to add, say, a P that said, your. I used to say that for some reason. I don't even know what that means. What do you think will happen? What do you think will happen to this? Because I'm using plus equals. I'm simply adding to the string of the HTML. So I can use this to my advantage. Instead of slapping it on the DOM with a pen child, what I can do is knowing what we just learned, instead of creating the element with this document.create element and then setting its inner text, what can I do instead? I could just type it out, but what do I want to add to? That's right. So instead of doing all this, I can simply, on the task list, I can see what is the inner, in her, HTML for the task list, and what should it be right now? Remember, task list is ID tasks. What is the inner HTML of tasks right now? Nothing. But what do I really want to add to it? So I'm going to add to plus equals, because what happens if I just do equals? It just reassigns over and over. But I don't want to do that. I want to add to every single time. So if I plus equals, and what exactly do I want to plus equals? Another p tag? All right. I want to add a li tag. And what do I want to add in here? For show? I want to add the new comment. How do I add that? I need the string interpolation. Oops. Bloop. And so how do I do that? Friggin' money. But what variable do I want? Hmm. Who feels like they understand how this inner HTML is working? Who would rather create element and then and then uh, change the text? Okay, either one, totally fine. But I do want to warn you that notice how when you simply add to the inner HTML, it affects the DOM immediately. All right? If I put a string with the p tag, it adds it immediately to the DOM. That means that the DOM will react to the inner HTML being reset. What can happen is and this is dangerous, is this is kind of like the best practice. So if you do this, you kind of do this. And then you can kind of do this. So if I wanted to add a bunch of stuff, like say, besides the li tag, what else do I want to add? A delete button, right? Do I want the delete button right next to the li or inside the li? Okay. Okay. What do I want to add? Oh my goodness. And what do you want that inner text to be? X for delete. So? Yup. Oh my gosh. So here's the thing. 
I'll get to it. Just be careful because what's stopping you from doing this? And running a function. Shh, it's bad. So this is known as like cross-site scripting. So just be careful with inner HTML as you're pulling from user input. All right, so right now we are currently pulling user input. That's what we're slapping to the DOM. So for your labs, for your understanding, and for just being able to manipulate the DOM, feel free to use this, but just be aware that there are some security issues with it. Cool? So the idea here, the idea here is new task is being interpolated, right? Whatever it may be. What if new task was right? So it doesn't run here because there are certain safety measures in place, but there's ways to get around it, which I won't not, which I will not get into, because it's bad, you know, and I don't know about them. <laughs> cool. So just be careful with inner HTML. I got a little lost about the dot value on the new task. Dot value on new task. Is that why you would use inner HTML? Oh no 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 no. So new task, right, is the new task description ID. So new task description ID is actually an input. So an input has a several attributes, right? Type, ID, name, and placeholder. So whatever the placeholder is, right? This is the placeholder. When I refresh, look what the placeholder becomes. Once I start typing in here, this is actually the value attribute for an input. This is the placeholder right now, this blank. So now it's a value attribute for the input. When you type that value. Yeah, so whatever I type in becomes essentially this. Right? Like whatever I'm typing. Which is inner type. Which is just value. It's a value attribute. Which is a string of text. Which is a string of text, yes. And that's why you that's why I can call dot value on the input. But that's why also you can do taskless.inner.html. No, every single thing has inner HTML. Like if I looked at the inner HTML of the form, what should I get? All the tags. All the tags that are nested inside form. This is the inner HTML, the label tag, the input tag, and this other input tag. Do you see the tags with their value? You just see the HTML come up. Um, like when I, when I got the ID list and I asked for its inner HTML, I saw an H2, a UL, that's actually it, as a string. This is the inner HTML of this div. Okay. Yeah. Just like the inner HTML of this form would be label input and input. And the inner HTML of this div would be h1 form label input input div h2 ul. Cool. All right. So cool. So we kind of went over this, right? The idea now is this X button, right? How many of you added an event listener right here inside this event listener? For the, for the delete button. Okay, so the idea here is we can take advantage of event delegation by simply looking at what everything is. Okay, no, yeet, show nuff, right? G is for gains. Let's take a look at this to do's. This X button, they're all the same. All I need to do is click this button and the parent element should disappear. So if this is e.target, e.target.parent element should be the one that gets blasted. But let's take a look at this container now. 
What holds all of the delete buttons? All right, the list or the tasks or both? All right, which one would you want to put it on? Why, why tasks and not list? Because list has other stuff. You want to put it at the lowest level that still contains everything. So if I had one event listener on task listening for a click, and if that click, the target had particular attributes, then I would do something. So let's get into this data set, and then we'll kind of call it for a day. Yeah? So right now, what I want to do is I want to add an event listener. The reason people tend to think like I should add it right here is because, oh no, I don't actually have right here, outside the submit, I cannot grab each of the delete buttons because it doesn't exist on the DOM yet. But does task exist on the DOM? Yes. So if I add an event listener to tasks and I just slap things to the DOM under tasks, remember that same rule. And that is if anything happens to a child, the parent will know about it. The parent will know about it. So if I add an event listener tasks, no matter how many LIs I add, this parent will still be listening to all the children. So if I add 20 tasks or one task, this one task div will still know. And so that's why event delegation could be useful because you don't know what will be on the DOM yet or how many, but you know where it will be. So that's why this HTML is the wireframe and that you just slap a bunch of things on it and you add event listeners to the right container. Does that does that sentence make sense to you guys? You want to add it to the right container. So cool. So if I add an event listener to task, let's do that. How, do I have access to task right now? Great. I already have it. So I can do task list dot add event listener. And what am I listening for? A submit? The click. Oops, that's not gonna work. Embarrassing. And then it needs what? The callback function, right? So like you see what I'm saying? You get so much practice with it that it starts to become less and less fuzzy. So this function will only be invoked once anything on the task list is clicked. So this callback function should receive what? The event. Do I need to prevent default here? No. Why? Why no? Right, like if I click task, which is a UL, what's, what happens? What's the default action? Nothing. Nothing. So if I see prevent default here, I'm going to be like, okay, okay. It's just like a little thing for me that's like, why did you do that? All right? And if you could justify it, then I'm like, cool. But right now, I, I don't really see a justification. Um, it just is an indicator potentially of pattern matching. So the decisions that you make need to start to be more purposeful. Um, and I bring that up because in interviews, one of the first things they're going to do is because you don't have a lot of experience in the industry, the only thing they can talk to you about in terms of relevant code is the engineer will look through your GitHub, look through your Mod 2 project, look through your Mod 4 project, your Mod 5 project, and be like, okay, cool, tell me why you did this. Right, let's talk about your code that you wrote, which is very fair because who would know better than you, right? And so that's why you have to understand the decisions that you're making because you will be asked about them later. So for example, like if you added event listeners inside here every single time, then they might ask you like, oh hey, you're adding like nine, 10 event listeners if you have nine or 10 tasks, right? Why did you choose to do that? Or is there, a better way TM. And you can be like, oh yeah, I learned about event delegation after that, so I'd refactor it in this way. And then they'll be like, okay, cool, you understand. And that really helps them gauge an understanding of where you are and what you know, even though the code that you've written before is not necessarily the best. I don't know what that really means. Does that make sense? Cool. So, great, I have a task list. First thing I want to do is, boop, let's, uh, console log this bad Johnson. So the idea here is if I click this, what would happen? Well, the like the, the UL is kind of like almost impossible to find, so let's add something, right? Add that task, good answer. 
So remember, it's this tasks, anything in this task that gets clicked technically will fire that event. So if I click this button, this little dot here, it should fire the event. And that's in fact the LI, which makes sense. But what if I click this, what should happen? What should I see for the console log? What is e.target? The button, the delete button, right? So as I add more and more tasks, each one is its own individual button. They're different. So what I can do is I can check to see if e.target, right, maybe the tag or the node is like a delete button, then it should delete. But here we can be more specific with JavaScript. ID and, C and ID in classes are typically reserved for like CSS, but we can use them in JavaScript. But if you want something JavaScript specific, typically the attribute that you'd want to add is this data attribute. So let's take a look. If I wanted to add an attribute to button, how would I do that? Can I just drop it in right here? Like, could I just do ID something? Well, I could, but why would I not want to add ID? Because all the IDs would be the same. They're no longer unique. So class might be useful here, right, for like delete button. So here is um, another like little pro tip from your boy. So. You add dashes in CSS, it's camel cased in JavaScript, and then it's snake cased in Ruby. So this is the convention for like CSS, uh, for like IDs and classes. Cool. But here, like I was trying to talk to you about, in terms of like the JavaScript, you can add like data. You can add uh, like a data, whatever you want to name it. You can name it ID, you can name this frame, you can name this your boy, whatever. It has to be prepended with data dash. So here, because we're trying to do something, for me, that sounds like an action. So I'm going to just put data action. You can name it whatever you want. If the data action is delete, then it should do something. So let's take a look at that target one more time and see. I now see that there's this like data action delete there. So how can I actually grab it? Well, hopefully, the debugger will not be a bum today. Sad bum dev tools. If I click this, okay, okay, okay. Great. So what is e.target? It's the button, right? How can I get to this data attribute? All right, it's known as data set, which is a little different than the direct data dash action. And here's why. If I wanted to, I can add so many different of these data attributes. Like I can do data dash mat equals to powerful. Powerful. I'm going to just leave that. And I can put data dash o charlie. And I can put downfield. So if I were to refresh and I were to do this again, I'm going to do that. So what is e dot target? Now it has all these data dash attributes. If I do e.target.dataset, it's going to give me back an object with action, Matt, and Charlie. Cool? So in order to get inside one of these objects, how would I get to data action? Data set dot action. It will give me delete. Data set dot mat would give me Powerful. So data attributes are a little tricky in the way that they just return an object that you then have to go inside all of those different keys. So if I do data set dot action, does that equal to delete? Oops. So in here, that should be my conditional. If the e dot target dot data set dot action is equal to what? Delete. Then I want to actually delete that parent node that we talked about. So remember, we're at the target, and I want to go up one. 
It's just parent element. That's going to go from that button. That's going to go from right here, this button, to its parent element. So we can see e.target.parent element will give me the li, that specific parent's li. And this works because, think about it like this. If I had a bunch of these, right? If I go to e.target.parent, which one will it be? It should be fs. It's not going to delete any of the other ones. So I'm just going from the target one level. And it's always going to be relative to the target. So when I click this e.target.parent element, it's going to be this particular li. And that's why it scales, and that's why that works. Cool. Uh, I had a computer side of the but I think I did parent node. Is that the same thing, or is that the same thing from something different? It should work. So element and node are, are for what you need to know, they're about the same. They're such a tiny nuance difference. I can tell you guys about it okay. if you want. But. I'm just curious. Okay, that'll work. Cool. And then you just run this remove function on it. All right, and that's basically how the delete works using like inner HTML. So this is very useful because you can just add a ton of things to it. So if I wanted to, I don't know, say try to get the edit function to work. How fast would it be for me to literally just do edit that task? And then I should add a data action of. And that way, this just becomes e.target.dataset.action should equal what? Edit. And then I'm going to perform whatever the edit code winds up being. Cool? I just want to talk to you through like how I would kind of like start doing that. So we covered a lot today, all right? We covered this review. Who feels better about slapping things to the DOM, either through a pen child or through inner HTML? All right, should be no problems, OK? OK. Who feels pretty good about like the idea of where the script tag goes, if I should be using it in the head? Kind of a slight understanding of async, defer, or moving it to the bottom of the body. Or you can use document at event listener, DOM content loaded. All right. What about arrow function syntax and function keyword syntax? How are you feeling about it? Remember, if you don't really know the arrow syntax, forget about it. Just use the function keyword until we get to that lecture. Cool? All right. Yeah, that, that's all I have for you today. <laughs>